so breathing correct so last class i think we discussed about uh, inhalation and exhalation yeah so i think we can see this diagram correct inhalation and i think we all know what is inhalation and, uh, and what is exhalation correct but the main important thing in inhalation i can uh, you can see in the diagram here correct this is a normal position of the diaphragm okay so this is a normal position of the diaphragm but you can see here the diaphragm is getting contracted it is moving down yes from its original shape from its original shape it is moving down during inhalation but when we exhale then the diaphragm relaxes so it moves up okay yeah so i might have told a uh, diagram in the first thing so it's just a diaphragm so i just wanted to clear that error so that's the only thing which i haven't discussed during inhalation and exhalation during the last session so with this i will just go to the next topic which means again the respiration itself okay so i will talk about what exchanges between uh, the gases because still we are in respiration only i'll write down here exchange of gases correct between alveoli the blood alveoli comma the blood and tissues fine yeah so this is a very important topic so i'll just switch off the video now yeah. so obviously we intake air right we intake air that is basically what oxygen correct so it reaches our blood it reaches our blood and combines with what and combines with hemoglobin correct hemoglobin which is there in the rbc there is my red blood cells correct and this oxygen and this oxygen is released is released in alveoli tissues in alveoli tissues that is through what that is through blood vessels okay so that is our first step so this is exchange of gas between alveoli blood and tissues so the air which is rich in oxygen reaches the blood which combines with our hemoglobin in rbc and oxygen is released in what the alveoli tissues that is bracket through the blood vessels the second step is the carbon dioxide obviously correct which comes out through exhalation carbon dioxide step 2 the carbon dioxide is released in blood is released in blood correct and obviously it is dissolved obviously it is dissolved into it dissolved into it correct and how it is carried and it is carried by what blood vessels and carried by this carbon dioxide is carried by blood vessels and this carbon dioxide released in alveolar sac this carbon dioxide is released in very important term alveolar sac alveolar sac 
which is sent out through our nostrils, which is sent out through our no nostrils, which is sent out through our nostrils. Okay. So first step is oxygen is getting inside. The fat is the first step. Correct. And obviously, carbon dioxide should be released in blood. That's our second step. Correct. And where is this carbon dioxide carried? Carry carbon dioxide as well as oxygen is carried through what? Our blood vessels itself. Our blood vessels itself. Correct. Yes. And this carbon dioxide is released in the alveolar sac, which is sent out through our nostrils respectively that's all this is a simple process in the exchange of gases in what in get between alveoli blood and tissues respectively so this is a simple thing so let me just write down let's take the two type of organism as of now one is terrestrial organism terrestrial organism yes obviously it uses for what atmosphere it uses atmosphere atm meaning atmosphere for respiration next one aquatic organism aquatic organism which uses what dissolved oxygen so this uses dissolved oxygen in water right for o2 o2 meaning oxygen for respiration for respiration So next thing is the respiration in plants. Respiration in plants. I'll write on this heading here. One second. So three main points in this, correct? It's very simple compared to the animals and human beings. Respiration plants is very, very simple. So mainly three things. Number one, stomata in leaves. Stomata in leaves. Number two, lenticels in stems. Lenticels in stems and number three, general surface of the root. Number three, general surface of the root, respectively. So, this is nothing but my respiration in plants. Now, the transportation, correct? Yes. So, obviously, we need what? The food, right? Correct? Food, oxygen and everything. Yes. So, the transportation in human beings is done by what? The circulatory system. Let's take transportation. The side heading, I will put it here as transportation in human beings. So obviously, don't take it as a complex term. Make it a real life. Obviously, we need what? Now for me, teaching what I need. Obviously, I need oxygen supply. Correct? And for energy, what I need? Food. O2. 
and then the most other important thing is food correct so these two things are taken care by circulatory system the transportation of human body is taken care by what circulatory system which consists of essentially three parts that's all right on here the number one the most important thing heart yes the pumping organ correct second one blood vessels that is the arteries and the veins so all of these things we already know it but still arteries and veins the blood vessels correct the blood vessels and the third one blood and the lymph that is my circulatory medium through blood and the lymph i'll talk about all of these things in detail so blood we already know but some of you might not know what is lymph blood and the lymph respectively okay obviously for the transpiration purpose so all of these things now in detail i'll tell you so let me take the circulatory system so we can see in the circulatory system mainly what pulmonary capillary pulmonary artery correct the vein the aorta the left atrium the right atrium posterior cava vena cava vena cava is also there but in the diagram i can't show it to you then we got right ventricle left ventricle then the arterial blood the black blood and the capillaries of peripheral tissues respectively so it kind of look like a complex diagram but it's not that complex too okay so this i will write it down for better understanding the circulatory system in human beings so we have seen something called the left atrium correct i'll write down here the first one so obviously we inhale now we come to the second part correct the oxygen gets mixed into our blood right correct so the lungs the lungs supply supply oxygen rich blood correct oxygen rich blood to the left atrium of the heart to the left atrium of the heart that is our first step correct now what happens is this left atrium is there right correct yes it relaxes this left atrium once it receives the blood once it gets the blood once it gets the blood once it let the blood what will happen it relaxes correct and contracts and contracts when the this left atrium contracts contracts when this blood when this blood is transferred to the left ventricle left ventricle okay i want to show you the thing actually here you can see here the left atrium here correct and left ventricle 
So once this oxygen rich blood is transferred to this part, the left atrium contracts. Okay, so that's what I wanted to say, the left atrium. Yeah. Then what happens now the left atrium contracts, correct? Now let us take the left ventricle. Left ventricle. Correct? So what happens to left ventricle contracts? If left ventricle contracts, then the blood is pumped out of the body. Then the blood is pumped out. Blood is pumped out. Okay, when the left ventricle contracts. Yes, so if it gets the blood, what happened? Left ventricle expands. If left ventricle gets the blood, it expands. If it is giving the blood out, it contracts. Yes, then what happened? This blood now come with no oxygen or deoxygenated blood. Now the pumped out blood comes out with no oxygen. We call it as deoxygenated blood. Deoxygenated blood. Correct? It comes from the body. Yes. And where it goes? It goes to the upper chamber on the right. So deoxygenated blood the body is, blood is pumped out of the body right here, correct? Yes, pumped out. Correct? This deoxygenated blood comes from the body, comes from the body, comes from the body, yes, to the upper chamber on the right. That is, to the upper to the upper chamber. Now the left part is over. Okay, now it is the right thing. Right atrium. First we discuss about left atrium, right? Now we discuss about the right atrium. Correct? To the upper chamber on the right. That is my right atrium. So the deoxygenated blood goes to the right atrium. And obviously, once it gets the blood, what is the first thing it will do? It will be very happy and it will expand the right atrium, expands, right atrium, expands. Once it receives the blood, whether it is, but here it is deoxygenated blood respectively. Clear up to this? I hope so. Now, Right atrium are done. Correct? Now, where it will pass? This one. This will be passed towards the right ventricle. Correct? Which is in the lower chamber. Upper chamber is over. Now, lower chamber. Lower chamber, what is there? Right ventricle. Yes. And what will happen to it? It will expand. Right ventricle will expand. It will be happy. Correct? And obviously, what is the status of, let's take uh, the right atrium now. I'll write down here. Right atrium status is what now? Right atrium will be in contract because it has given out the blood. Given out blood is always contraction. When we receive the blood, it is all about expansion. You got the point? Yeah. Yes. Now, this right ventricle transfers the blood. Yes. You got the point. And what happens now? 
right ventricle expands. So when the right atrium, now it is in contraction mode, right? Right atrium, what is the mode of now? Right atrium is in contraction mode. So if it is contraction, what happens? It transfers the blood to the right ventricle. So which is expanding, which in turn pumps it to the lungs. So this pumps the blood, correct? Yeah. This pumps what the it pumps it to the lungs for oxygenation for oxygenation. OXY, GE and oxygen, correct? Asian, oxygenation. You got the point. Now comparing to the thickness of the right ventricles, so they have got a thicker muscular walls. They got what? Right ventricles has got right ventricles has got thicker muscular walls. So they pump blood into various organs. So they pump blood into various organs. Correct? Now we got, I have told you something regarding the valves here. Yes. So these valves does not allow the blood to flow backwards when the atria or the ventricles contract. So what is the purpose of the valves? I'll write down here, the valves. Wall's purpose is what? It does not, it doesn't allow the blood to fall, to flow backwards when the ventricles or atria contracts. When the ventricles or atria complex. Okay. 